Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of the Land Geek with the favorite Nichi real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We have Landon, AI, the aquatic investor, Harris. Landon, how are you? Doing well, Mark. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. Can't complain. Good to see you. We've got Eric, the technician, Peterson. Eric, how are things in the land of country music? Things are things are good. Temperatures a little bit cool today in the low 60s, but all is good. Sun's out. No complaints here. Low 60s. That's like winter for Tate and I. I know. And Scott. Uh, T- Tampa's a little little finicky. It's not, it's not as hot there sometimes as you would think. But uh, speaking of, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield in Vegas. Tate, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. Happy to be on today and uh, excited to, to chat with everyone. Good to see you. You know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm good. How are you? Pulse is still normal. And uh, <laughs> respiration is still fine. Still good from Orlando, huh? It's still it's still <laughs> good. So we have an interesting topic today. The walls. The walls. And I think the first passive income wall is usually around 10000 a month. Uh, that's, no, I, I would disagree with you, Mark. What do you think it is? One thousand dollars. One thousand is the first wall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because look, here's why. Let me tell you why this is a wall. Until you create a thousand dollars of passive income from raw land investing, you don't know if it truly works. Mm. Interesting. I think once you hit, you know, there's something big about two hundred bucks passive, five hundred bucks. Right. But the moment you go to four digits, that's a victory. That's a that's a breakthrough that means you can't go backwards now. You can never look at passive income the same again, because you know what can be done with this method, with this model, with these types of properties and and the techniques that we use. So 10,000. Yeah, that's a huge one. But I really think the first barrier passive income barrier or wall is a lot less than that. Okay. So let's just start at a thousand a month then. If that's the first barrier, would the second wall be five? Yeah. I mean, to me, I think it is. And then the third wall be 10? Yeah. I mean, look, as you grow, like to go from 1,000 to $5,000 a month in passive income growth you're talking about needing to introduce systems and teams and VAs, right? I think you can fake it on a thousand dollars a month. You really can. You don't need a lot of tools. You don't need a fancy CRM. The moment you start doing five grand and doing volume, you're going to want all the help you can get. So not only is there the sales thing, the marketing thing, the acquisitions thing, the money thing, the passive thing, You've also got to learn how to do the management thing, which is far more difficult than anything. Right, right. So I, I think you're you're bringing up a lot of really good points, and I think there's also that psychological component when you throw in a default. So you hit your first thousand dollars a month, and then you get a default, and now you're eight hundred a month, and then you get another sale, and now you're eleven hundred a month, and then you get another default, and so it just feels like. Am I ever going to get over this this hump or over this wall? So, Landon, we'll start with you. Have have you experienced this wall? And if so, what were the types of things that you would have to do mentally and within your business to get to the next big wall or hurdle, if you will? So, I find this this topic very interesting Um, because you see it in so many walks of life. I think with this business, we get stuck on numbers. We get stuck in trying to compare and we just get stuck with, we have a certain goal 
I guess that's really where it comes down to. Everybody has their goal number or whatever they want to reach. You know, I kind of equate it to if I if I was coaching someone um, as a swimmer, and they're just off the street, and they say, you know what, Landon, I, I want to be at the Olympic level. I, I, want, I want to make it that far. Okay, great. So you, you kind of look at it a little bit more of like, well, what does that include? Like, what what is entailed in that? It takes time. It takes you know effort. It takes work. And I think where some people get stuck is they don't really look and see the amount of time that you kind of have to do in this business. And you've you've got to you've got to learn. You've got to grow. Like I, I wouldn't sit there. I, I might have been a you know a decent swimmer, but I wouldn't sit there and tell you I could get on a bike right now. And be able to do what Tate does. There's no way. <laughs> it would take me years to get to that point. And does in this business, does it take years? I would it would say it does take time, but you know, everything is different when when you're looking at well, what you know, how much money do you have and what systems are you using and and what do you know? Like just what you guys were just discussing. It's like there's so many pieces that you just have to put together. It just takes time to grow all of this. So I think when we're looking at this business, you can't expect certain things to just happen. So what do you do when you hit those walls? You've got to start digging in a little bit. Like if you give up on everything you do once you hit a wall, you never get anywhere. So I, I think it's a little bit more of a mindset shift. It's a little bit more of a reality take. And you look at, well, this is a business. I've got to grow it. I've got to grow myself. I've got to learn what to do and how to do it. And you just push forward and you definitely don't look at everybody else. I mean, it's great to have people out there in front of you, but it's a little bit more of like a chase. You, you, you know, if I've got a kid that's um, swimming next to another kid and I go, go chase him down. You just go hunting. That's awesome. And you just go pushing to get after them. So I think, I think if you're in this business, it's fine to look at other people as far as, I'd like to be that one day, but it's more of just go, just go get it. You, you got to start figuring out what you need, how you're going to get there and be patient and work through it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot in there to unpack, but I think the the main theme is you have to be patient as your skills develop and you can't compare yourself to other people because they might be coming in with a different skill set and they might be coming in longer even even a little longer than you in the business and you don't want to start comparing yourself if you're a baby in the business you don't want to start comparing yourself to someone who's crawling like get to the crawling stage and then you know start walking <laughs> so i think it's it's a really interesting insight into the, the power of patience and perseverance in in this business and, and any business and in life. Uh, the technician, Eric Peterson, what, what are your thoughts about the, the passive income walls that you see yourself and your clients hit and how to get through those? I think that they're in, inevitable, right? We're, we're going to find, you know, those walls at different places, I think, you know, for some people that might be at a thousand dollars for other people, it might be at $10,000. Maybe everything goes swimmingly until you hit 10 and then, you know, you experience all sorts of troubles. But I think, you know, as Landon was saying, we've, you know, the coaching program and, and the resources we have are there to help people get through these things, right? Like, we as coaches are there to work with students to help them figure out where these problems are, what's holding them back. You know, why did you reach X number and then fall back? And, and how can you go past that and, and stay there and, and so on? So, um, you know, you have mentors to, to help you through that process. Um, I, I completely agree. Uh, Mark, you like to say it all the time. Comparison is the thief of all happiness. If if we are so fixated on what 
our counterparts are doing in this business. We're always going to feel like we're behind, like we're a loser, because there's always going to be someone out there that's doing more, that's, that's, you know, got more passive income, that's whatever beyond us. Right. So don't look at those things as, Hey, I'm a failure because I'm not doing the same as, you know, John Doe here, but instead like, what can I change in my current business? What, systems can I put in place? What can I outsource? What can I automate? What can I, you know, what county should I work in? All of those things that contribute to this ultimate, you know, idea of passive income, like how can I improve all those things to get to whatever point that is? And then by the way, once you get there, you're probably going to want to go somewhere else. So, so be prepared for that, that it's not going to end. But um, I, I guess the other thing is like, Everybody is different. Um, what might take me, I don't know, 12 months to achieve, maybe someone else can achieve it in two months. That doesn't mean that, you know, I can't get there or the other person can't get there. It's just different. And there's there's lots of factors there, right? There's personalities. There's, you know, if we're talking about creative passing, creating passive income from land, there's the type of land we're selling. There's you know, how it's being marketed, how we're identifying with the market. Like there are a lot of variables, but I think the bottom line here is you just cannot give up. If you stick with this business, if you continue to put in the effort on a regular basis, you will achieve something of of significant merit. Like you just have to do the work. Yeah. It, it's so true. I mean, that, that consistency and that grit and that stick to in this business pays huge dividends. And again, if we all want to feel badly about ourselves, let's just compare ourselves to Mozart. Like I wasn't, I mean, right. Like it's just so easy to do. And I think that we, we just discount the the value of just being in the game. You're in the game. You're playing the game. You're playing the game as well as you can play it with the skill set you currently have. And then you grow and it's a competition of one. Yeah, you can look at other land investors as inspiration in the way that land and say, yeah, go chase them. But you certainly don't compare yourself to that person. And you just, because there's so many unknown variables, right? I mean, to compare yourself to Michael Phelps. Well, okay, look, I'm not getting up at four in the morning and I'm not going to train and eat and sleep and pay the price that he did to be the best in the world at what he did. But if my goal is to be a good swimmer, well, I can feel proud about getting in the pool every morning. Maybe I don't get in at four. I get it at six in the morning and maybe I train for an hour and not eight, right? It's not my my whole life, but I'm happy that I'm in the game and that, yeah, I'm not going to get there as quickly as Michael Phelps or someone who's world-class, but eventually if I keep doing it in 10 years, I'll be a really great swimmer compared to where I started. Uh, There's no analogy for cycling because no one else cycles except for Tate Litchfield, (laughs) but I could imagine it would, it would translate somewhat. Yeah, no Dave, doubt. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you know, I think going along this line, this this discussion of barriers, it's important to realize that the barriers aren't always passive income barriers, right? Sometimes those barriers can be getting your first VA hired and trained, right? Sometimes your first barrier can be setting up geek pay, right? Like these are all barriers and they're roadblocks. And we do our best to make them as easy as we can to overcome. But in the end, there's going to be a large percentage of the people who are going to get there and say, I can't, it's too much. I'm going to go back to what I know. And look, the barriers, we want things that are a little bit challenging. Everybody should welcome that. I think it's important to remember that we are all capable of hard things and building a business is hard. That's a good thing, right? And because it's hard, it means we're 
in the right market, right? I don't want to work in an efficient marketplace. I want to work in an inefficient market. That's why I'm happy doing what I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Is there any other advice you would give to somebody who's at that $1,000 a month passive income mark and say, okay, this is going to be your, your in general, something that you're going to have to do to get uh, uh, above that hump? Yeah. Just, ta- just tactically. Tactically, uh, you know, we've said it here before, it requires more ads than you think it does. And you've got to own land to sell land. One in, one out doesn't work on the land business. Uh, We did a call recently and Mark and I were talking with this guy and, you know, we want to get results as quickly as possible, but that requires inventory. And I know somebody who is selling a ton of properties every single month and I asked them, how many properties do you have in inventory right now? It's 39. Well, no wonder they're getting all these sales, right? They got a lot of inventory. They got a lot of marketing. They're generating leads at a four to one ratio to the guy who's got five. So you got to own land to sell land. You got to market more than you want to, but never take your foot off the gas pedal. I love that. These could all be podcast titles. You got to own land to sell land. Never take your foot off the gas pedal. What was the other one? Tate rules. Something Tate like rules. That. Scott Todd. I'm at a thousand a month. I'm hit the wall. What's? How do I get through that that barrier? Okay, so ba- basically, you just keep going, keep moving your feet. I said this from day one, and the analogy is that uh, my. My son was playing lacrosse. He's out on the field. It's his first year playing lacrosse. I really didn't know what what lacrosse was all about, but he wanted to play it. He's out there playing it. And what happened was, like one of the one of the like their players would have the ball in his net, and there's no violation for stop to stop running. It's not like basketball where you got to keep dribbling. You can stop and hold the ball and think. And what happens is these guys, when they're trying to figure out how I can get to the goal, they stop and think. Well, the problem is when you stop and think and you're standing there, well, then the defense is not stopping and thinking, right? Like they're coming at you because the whole goal is to to like knock that ball out of your net, out of your, I'm not saying it right. Don't, if there's any lacrosse fans there, don't hate me, uh, out of your whatever, knock it down to the ground and like take, take it and score. Right. Like that's the whole, that's a defensive strategy. Well, the team stopped, they stopped. And there's this dad at the, at the other end of the field, like on my son's team. And he starts yelling in this deep bolsterous voice, move your feet. And the kid starts running again, or the whole team starts running again. And whenever they stopped the entire season, the guy would yell out in that deep bolsterous voice, Somewhat annoying, but I came to appreciate it. Move your feet. And, you know, I, I took that. I took that when I started my business because there are times where it's scary. There's times where it's hard. There's times where it's demotivating. And the tendency is to stop, right? It's just stop and think. But that's the wrong time to stop and think, right? Like that's the time that. You stop and think, and next thing you know, your emotions come in, and that self doubt comes in, and all this other stuff. So that's the time that you got to tell yourself, move your feet. When you start to feel the self doubt come in, move your feet. When you start to, you know, when when you start to question whether this business is worth it or not, move your feet. And here's the thing, here's the thing about this business, and I'm going to tell you straight up, and I tell everybody this: in the beginning. In the beginning, this business and every other business sucks. And I'll tell you exactly why this business sucks. It sucks because the numbers are small. Two years ago, uh, I went and I bought uh, a condo. Okay. Today, today that condo, um, it brings in about a thousand bucks a month. Okay. Well, my investment in that condo was now 
Okay, so it's a thousand dollars. I get one pop, a thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's one stream of income, a thousand dollars a month. I think I had to put down, I think I put into this thing, I don't know, $20,000 or something like that, right? Now, remember, that's like I'm netting this. Okay, like my net is about, it's actually just under $1,000, but whatever. Now, that said, I, I can generate $1,000 a month with probably about four properties. So probably around, you know, I don't know, $10,000, I can generate $1,000 a month. Okay, for $20,000, I generate that $1,000 a month and I have one unit, okay? Now, here's the thing is in the beginning, it's $100 or $200, which is not a big deal. You're like, I'm spinning my wheels here. It's exciting. And then you hit that wall. It doesn't matter what wall you hit. There's always walls. You hit the $1,000 a month. You call it a wall. You can call it a ceiling. You can call it whatever way you want. You hit it and you you bounce off of it and you feel defeated. Okay. And you start to look at it. You start to second guess it. You're like, man, I'm doing all of this work. I'm working. I'm slaving away here for, for pennies on the dollar. And if you're if you're doing the work, well, guess what? You're working a minimum wage job or below minimum wage job because you're not outsourcing and building teams. And it's the teams that will help you move faster. And then what happens is if you keep at it, you keep moving your feet, you keep growing it, you keep you keep scaling it. Guess what happens? What happens is those small checks, $1,000 a month become $5,000 a month, right? We go, we go from gas money every month to a nice vacation every month. And we go from a nice vacation every month to being able to, to retire our, our loved ones or ourselves from our job. And then we go from that and guess what? Then we start to look for how we can help other people. And we go from that to making a difference in the world. And it's not about the money, it's about your why. And you have to really keep understanding when you have that self-doubt and you, you hit those walls. Why am I doing this? It will get better. Small checks become big checks. Move your feet. It's it's the mantras. It's the things that you say that will separate you from anybody else that hits one of those walls, has self-defeat, drops back down and says, forget it. I'm going to go back and and like just give all my money to the stock stockbroker to invest it because I'm done and tired. Yeah. I mean, really... For those of you who are listening to this, maybe go back and rewind that because there was so many just pearls of wisdom in there and such a great analogy between what you have to do in the in the land business versus any other business. And yeah, every business in the beginning is hard. And if it weren't hard, there would be literally no satisfaction as you go through the hurdles, you go through the walls. And the truth of the matter is you never get to the top of the mountain. It's, there's always another challenge. Even if like I have friends who've sold their company. Okay, well, there, there's still other challenges for them to now go after in life. I don't think anyone who's listening to this podcast would find it enjoyable for the rest of their lives to spend, you know, time on a, on a beach doing nothing. Tate's like, well, maybe right now, I mean, if you're really busy right now, you would, I guarantee you, try, try to do nothing for a whole no, day. No, 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 no. You couldn't do it. I At agree some with point, you. You'd be like, okay, I got, I feel like I have to do something. And that purpose, that why propels you. And really, Moving your feet, getting through those walls is so important. And I think, you know, what everyone said is the answer to get through to that next level. And uh, good topic. That being said, the podcast is at that point now where we get to ask Landon A.I. Harris for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Landon, what do you got? So I've had this question asked a lot, and I think we all get it, is, you know, what are you automating? What are you doing in business? And honestly, that's the hardest question to answer because it's, we all have different things that we automate and how we pull it together. But 
Um, there's one thing that I felt like it's pretty standard and it's leads, you know, and how are you automating the leads? Uh, so I found a quick blog. Um, I'll just put it in the chat. Um, so the quick blog is, uh, it's a, it's a zap and it's actually a blog about multiple zaps that you can do that are already created for you and how you can get uh certain zaps into your emails or certain zaps into slack for your for your team so um i thought it was a quick like i said um little tip that a lot of people could maybe take advantage of and um kind of use this is so geeky i love it i love it <laughs> so it's it's basically apps using zapier automation with mm -hmm. zapier now zapier is not free no, I. Th but that being said, when you start looking at how much time you're spending doing these things manually, Zapier becomes like the greatest bargain out there. And I remember, uh, I think of Scott. You and I were joking about when Zapier raised their rates. We're like, "Yep, not a problem," because it just means that we have we have more automations, and that's why they're they're. They they raised their rate. It wasn't just a willy nilly rate raise. It was just we've we've hit the limit on automations, and then we're paying the next thing. Scott's like, I don't think that was me. That was Rossi, Mark. No, Maybe. no, 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 not no, listen. They when they raised the okay, look. So it used to be a bargain. Today it's today they're ripping people off. In my opinion, I don't know. Like they're killing people. Is that right? But oh, dude, man, they. They took I see. I, I love to overpay. $50. Okay, they took my price from fifty dollars a month to uh, like a hundred and thirty dollars a month, and they cut back my number of zaps. So, like, the listen. But I learned a lesson. Okay, like I learned something. Like I let it go. I'm like whatever. But and my lesson was like, don't don't try to like spite them and start a spite store so they can have it. <laughs> So that's true, but there is, I think we could do another tip of the week. So uh, there is a Zapier alternative, but before we talk about that Zapier alternative, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor this week, which is Flight School. Learn how the next six weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. And oh yeah, I know what you're thinking. Well, what about that flight school investment? It ain't going to cost you nothing guaranteed. You're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Just follow the recipe. How to learn more? Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. So Scott Todd, what is the Zapier, the less expensive Zapier alternative? Uh, I think it's called uh, Pabbly, P-A-B-B-L-Y. P-A-B-B-L-Y. I'm going to check. Yeah, dot com. You can, it's called Connect. And uh, yeah, you can you can get like a, um, you can pay f on their website. You can pay for a uh, lifetime deal. Uh, so you pay like one time, don't, don't scroll to the bottom and be like, Oh, I just want to sign up for the monthly stuff, which is still a good deal compared to, to, uh, Zapier. But if you go at the very top, they normally have like a banner or something that says like, check out our offer. Yeah. $249 and, for lifetime access. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Lifetime access, $249 and you get, and they have different plans from that. And if like, if you don't see it, just Google like lifetime access. Uh, Pabbly, and you'll find it. Trust me. They're, they throw these these like deals around like the bus. And look, it's not like Zapier does do almost like it, okay. There's just a ton of them, and I'm not saying this is like the best alternative. Like in terms of like, it's not at that same level, but it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good because I do use them for other things. Uh, for other zaps, yeah, I see it at the top now. It's called Connect, actually. It's probably Connect, mm -hmm. and then you grab the offer. Yeah, take two forty nine, but like uh, that is like okay. So that's for ten workflows, but if you want 3, unlimited workflows, yeah, mm -hmm. if you want unlimited unlimited hooks and all the other stuff, and like ten thousand tasks a month, 
man, it's like a six nine nine one time payment. So that that is a that's a bargain. That is a bargain, right? That is a bargain. Ten thousand automated tasks a month for six hundred ninety nine dollars. There's there's no VA in the world that could do that, or a series of VAs. I actually forgot about them. But Landon, we're, I, I'm saying your your tip of the week is fantastic, and I use that beer, but I don't want to be the, you know, I want to acknowledge like, don't be like me, don't overpay for everything. <laughs> There's other alternatives out there, but I'm so locked in now to Zapier. We have so many workflows. Uh, it'd be a lot more frustrating for the team to. Sounds like a team problem. That. It, well, that's definitely a team problem for sure. But, you know, what's, what's, uh, there's, there's no, uh, there's no cliche. It's like happy wife, happy life, happy team, happy business. I don't know. More profitable? Something. There's got to be a cliche out there. Anyways, I thought this was a, a great podcast. I hope you, dear listener, are getting value. And if you are, do us three little favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. And by the way, Dirt Rich 2, how to scale your land business, coming out soon. Be on the lookout for it. So we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. Freedom. ring. 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 Thanks, everybody. So, am, am I the only one, by the way, watching NBA playoffs? Yes, no, no, because the NHL playoffs are on. Because the NHL playoffs are on. <laughs> so, are you, so, so, Tate, now, do you watch the playoffs? I do. I mean, yeah. I, yes. Short answer is yes. Okay. And Landon, you're watching playoffs? Yeah. yeah okay. I'm, I'm going through a whole time guilt thing now. Because for about two years, I stopped watching sports and it was glorious. Like I had all this like new, fresh time. I didn't have to get emotionally involved with the team. No, Mark. And now, now I'm watching. Don't playoffs, bring like, me that. This, don't bring this me is, that. This is like time. Like it's time like we're doing something else. <laughs> it's the playoffs. I don't know. I, yeah. It is. Playoffs are, that's like the time to lock in. I can mm-hmm. ignore the, <laughs> the regular season playoffs. I'm like, mm-hmm. The, the entertainment value of a Steph Curry and a LeBron James and a De'Aaron Fox, uh, James Harden. I mean, these guys, Jokic and Mark Murray, Devin Booker, like there's so many stars. There's so much entertainment and the guilt because I could be reading. I could be <laughs> furthering my life. I could be bettering my life. I could be taking a walk at night. Anything is better than sitting on the couch. <laughs> Watching other people do amazing things for my entertainment. And yet I I I, I can't help myself now. Sucked in. I'm locked in. Tate, you're locked in, right? You gotta, they're they're, yeah, they're, they're incredible life. athletes. It's a good time. I, I enjoy Pretty it. Good. I like watching these guys. It's the entertainment factor is definitely there. So Eric and Scott, you guys are doing things productive <clears throat> at night, I assume. No, I've been watching some playoffs with one. <laughs> you're, okay, so you're watching. Okay, are you watching hockey or basketball? Yes. You are watching basketball? Okay, which which team? He's all about the Heat. Okay, so, so the, yeah, so we've so been the watching heat, the Heat games. The Heat. Jimmy Butler has been amazing, and they're the eight yes. seed. They beat the one seed, then they come in and they beat another lower seed, the Knicks. They're it's Thanks. it's amazing to watch. But the way that I've been doing it is I have been recording it. And then skipping through the commercials and sometimes <laughs> the free throws. Uh, but there's but there's risk because friends will text me. Can you believe what that happened? Like, no, don't text me. I don't I don't want to know. I want to go in fresh eyes. So Scott Todd, are you the only one who's are you the intellectually superior of the four of us? Am, You're reading yeah. Dostoevsky. Uh, uh, listen, I, I'm I'm over here trying to uh to to like, I don't know. Build, build like a billion dollar business or something, and you guys are like watching sports. It's all right. It's all right. Not not everybody can hit that billion dollar level, man. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. I, listen, I listen, I admit it. I, I'm a workaholic. Like it's okay. 
if you enjoy it, look, it's the problem. There's there's no there's no judgment there. I'm yeah. judging I'm judging myself. But yeah, I mean, I'm judging you too. So it's all good. <laughs> all right. So you're judging, I'm judging. We're Eric, judging. are you are you judging? Of course he is. A little bit? A lot. What are you talking about? Eric's always judging. <laughs> I, I thought this is a no, I thought this is a judgment free podcast. Now we're judging. All right. So besides the heat, Landon, who do you think? Who do you want to go further? Ooh, I kind of want to see Phoenix and Miami. I think that would be like the end, like the final. I think that those would be because I think that Kevin Love trade made a big difference for Miami. Would be yeah. really interesting. The two Kevin Phoenixes, Durant and Love. Phoenix is good. good. Yeah, but they're they're down o two now. I, I think they'll. I think they'll swing it around. I yeah. think they'll swing it around. I mean, for the two people that listen to this podcast and actually follow hockey, <laughs> um, Tate, how how are your nights doing? We're good. Round two tomorrow night. We play uh, the Oilers. So. Be uh, it'll be exciting. Good, should be some really good hockey. So now, are there injuries in hockey like there are in NBA that change the dynamics? Yeah, I mean, people are definitely getting injured, especially in the playoffs. You know, it's harder hitting, faster hockey. But uh, you know, I just think hockey players are just generally tougher, right? They're just tougher athletes. So. Um, they, I mean, it's part of the game, right? Like, where else can you get in a fist fight and get sent to the penalty box for a few minutes and then pop back out and be back, back on the ice? I mean, they're, they're tough guys. Not saying that any other professional athletes aren't tough, but these guys get punched in the mouth regularly while chasing a little black piece of rubber on ice with <laughs> skates on. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, for the for the five Canadian listeners. They're like, oh, go Tate. We love it. <laughs> I just started watching hockey a little bit since we moved to San Jose because there's actually a hockey team here. So it's a, a live game. That's pretty cool. I got it. It, it's, I, it moves. It's quick. Yeah. I mean, a coyote, I've been to a Coyotes game. It's it, Live games are fun. Live sports are fun. For <laughs> sure. Anyways, um. I'm on, I'm, I'm, you know, thank you for the therapy session, but, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to enjoy this year's playoffs and enjoy the genius of Steph Curry and LeBron while I still have them. And then, you know, maybe, uh, think about building a billion dollar business with Scott Todd on the side at night. That'd be fun. Scott, give me the thumbs up. All right. You're going to have to work though. Oh, I'll work. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not afraid of the work. All right. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring.